welcome back, everyday Americans. You've rejoined the Constitution study. And as promised, I have with me a wonderful guest, uh, Dr. Ming Wong. Uh, I've met him before. He has an amazing story, does some amazing work uh, right here in the Nashville area. And he has a movie coming out that I, I think you'll find interesting. So, Dr. Wong, thank you for joining us here at the Constitution study. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. I got a chance to see a preview. I'm looking forward to the movie. Tell us a little bit about this movie called Sight. Yes. Um, about 10 years ago, I started writing my autobiography from darkness to sight, talking about the journeys of a blind orphan children that we, our foundation had been able to help over the past 20 some years, their journey from darkness to light, but also how at the same time, these kids, their courage and determination has also helped me, their eye doctor, to come from my own darkness to light spiritually. And, uh, you know, I grew up in China during Cultural Revolution, when 19, from 1966 to 76, the government shut down all colleges of entire China and forcefully deported to labor camp, every single high school graduate. So in 1974, I called that. I was going to be sent away to labor camp as well. And then I learned how to play a Chinese violin instrument, learning dancing to avoid labor camp. That didn't work. Then in 1976, I got lucky. The Cultural Revolution ended. I got the chance to apply for college. And um, I got into college. And then in 1982, with $50, followed from a visiting American professor, with a Chinese English dictionary, I came to America, even though I was nearly penniless, but I was happy because I was free. So I wanted to write a book about 10 years ago to talk about this journey, uh, having found freedom in America, but also having found faith in America as well, in Jesus Christ. So I want to write a book called From Darkness to Sight. And then a studio approached me and uh, they want to make into a movie uh, by a man named David Fisher. He's a producer, and uh, he was really one who made it, the movie. I was involved in the script writing, making sure that uh, follow the story of the the, the truth that, that what happened um, in in my book. And so, ten years later, the movie came out, and it is actually uh, being released in this Memorial Day weekend this uh, year. And um, by Andrew Studio, uh, which um, has distributed The Chosen, The Bible Story, and uh, His Only Son, Old Testament Story, and also um, Sound of Freedom last year, another film about freedom and faith. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I've watched most of the stuff that comes out of Angel Studio, and I know this movie's been quite a long time coming. Uh, I know it's been at least a, what I think a couple of years since right. uh, I was there to see the the, the preview, and um, you know my wife is looking forward. She read your book. She loves it. She's looking forward to it. It's an interesting parallel because, as you say, you're talking about the physical, physically blind mm -hmm. coming to sight, while you go through a spiritually blind coming to sight. The movie deals with the. Uh, the the blind and, and treating them, but it also deals with your story of dealing with the cultural revolution and coming to this country and and having nothing and then spending so much of your time. I actually met Dr. Wong at another charitable event. There's a, a, a group out here called the 917 Society, which is where I first met him because he don't donate so much of his time to that to that process, to that entity and to children. It, it really is a it's an American success story. And there's so many people are looking around going, oh, America is terrible. America is evil. America is this and that. To me, you're an example of the true American dream. You showed up with nothing. You've got a very successful practice. You have, you've written a book. You have a movie. But best of all, you bring so much to other people's lives. Uh, that's why I wanted to make sure my audience knew about this, because it, it, thrilled by the movie or not, your story is certainly one worth learning about. Um, when you see people that um, don't appreciate what America is and and what America can do and and think they're owed things, what what do you say to them? Yeah, you know, who, uh, people who appreciate sight the most 
uh, those who used to be blind. People who appreciate freedom the most are those who used to not have freedom. Side is moving about story of someone who used to not have freedom to, to send a message to America today that we're so blessed, we should not forget to appreciate this country. And I feel exact same way, Paul. Um, there's too much criticism of America today and people looking at the deficiencies and negatives. Of course, we still have lots of things to do, improve, but yet we have so much good about this nation. I mean, just look at it. People from around the world, like myself, immigrants and refugees, some of them put their lives on the line so they can come to live in America. But living here in America, we ourselves sometimes have taken what we have for granted. And I think we should look at the positive aspect of our country, the freedom guaranteed by constitution, the faith and provided by the Bible. And remembering those are the two bedrocks of a nation that is truly what America is all about. So I, for one, as immigrant who used to not have all these and uh, come to America and found freedom and faith, I appreciate so much through the film Sight. I want to bring that message to our country. That's appreciate America, restore America to what it used to be. And also this film about Sight, helping this blind orphan children, and uh, talk about my research over many years, trying to figure out how to stop the scarring of these uh, blind orphan children's eyes. And I found out the only person that who does not scar are unborn children. But how can you do research on unborn child to figure out how to stop scarring without hurting a baby? They say there's no common ground between science and faith. But fortunately, I persisted. I did not give up. I prayed to Christ many times. Is there a common ground between science and faith? Eventually, um, I felt that God was giving me a, an idea, a suggestion, that maybe the reason the unborn child can, child can heal without scar has to do with the amniotic membrane that used to wrap around each of us before birth. And then maybe that's when the membranes what give us the ability to heal without scar before birth. So I got lots of placentas donated to me by mothers. I've given birth to children. The placenta is discarded anyway. And I did lots of research on placenta with the amniotic membrane, eventually developed the amniotic membrane contact lens. And when I put the scarless fetal amniotic contact lens onto injured eyes, indeed, scar is much reduced and the sight is restored. Then I asked myself, Paul, I said, did I really invent the amniotic membrane contact lens? I concluded, no, I did not invent the placenta. I did not invent the amniotic membrane. God did. The glory belongs to him. So what I decided to do is I just donate the technology to the world. I put my patent online and just show to the world how to do it. And I actually went around the world to about 50 some countries over 20 year period, uh, taught about over 10,000 eye doctors how to use the amniotic membrane technology. Today, 20 years later, as described in the film, amniotic membrane contact lens has now been used by eye doctors from nearly every nation and millions of patients have their eyesight restored. It's really a technology has essentially transformed the world. And it also shows that God wants science and faith um, to work together. Uh, even though it was interesting in the process, I did not make any money uh, myself, but some friends said, oh man, you're stupid. I said, no, I'm not stupid for two reasons. One, I'm answering God's calling and recognizing as a researcher and I did not invent these things. God did. God just allowed me to discover what he has already created to begin with. And that's number one. So the credit goes to Christ. And second, as an immigrant, I'm so grateful to America for giving me the opportunity, the freedom and faith. And that's my little way of paying back as an immigrant. You know, a couple of things popped out as you were saying that, um, you know, often uh, uh, we, we see certain professions as, as, as greedy and, you know, we're, we're thought to be greedy. You saw something and said, it's not something I can own. It's something I found and through that have blessed millions of people. But the other thing I noticed is the way you, you tell your story is you were stuck. The only way, you know, I have this possible solution but the only way to, to use it is to harm babies. And I'm not going to harm babies mm -hmm. rather than taking the shortcut, then justifying the, you know, the ends justify the means. We hear it so often in the, in, in so much of the progressive uh, talks. You said, no, let me find a way to do this without taking that shortcut. And because of that, 
you have, again, what God created, the, the, the placenta is there. I don't have to harm anyone. Uh, to me, that's, that's um, uh, you know, it, it shows a character that says, I'm not going to take the easy way out because there's got to be a better way. And sometimes, you know, Americans, we're just, we want that instant coffee in a microwave oven. We want it now. And we are not willing to wait and find a better way. I also, I don't know if it was intended, but you know, the movie released on Memorial Day, which is a day in America, we remember those who gave what Lincoln referred to as the last full measure of devotion so that we could be free. So yes. you would have a country to come to, to exercise your freedom. And through that, not only prosper yourself, but help millions of people around the world through that. Uh, yes. Was that intentional or just a... Yes. Yeah, okay. it was intentional. It was intentional because the movie, just like Sound of Freedom last year, released also by Andrew Studio, it's about freedom and faith. And Sight is also about freedom and faith. And the reason we have freedom is because the sacrifice made by veterans, soldiers, put their lives on the line, who give us their freedom. But sometimes we, as Americans living here, or who always had freedom, we we have taken for granted, just like President Ronald Reagan used to say that, you know, the loss of freedom could be just one generation away. So we have to constantly remind ourselves uh, the preciousness of freedom and the importance to stand up and defend it. And side is about that. Wonderful. So where can people find out more? Where can they get tickets? Where can, It's in the theaters now. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming it's going to hit streaming and all that. Where can people find out more, both about the movie and about your book? Yes, about the movie, it's very simple. It's released by Angel Studios. So angel.com forward slash site. So angel.com forward slash site. And in terms of the book, um, all my uh, proceeds of my books are donated to our site foundation so we can help more blind orphan children. They can simply visit wangfoundation.com, W-A-N-G. So wangfoundation.com. And we greatly appreciate public support even though the, these surgeries are free for these kids, but we raise money to help the transportation, housing, schooling, everything, the non-medical part of cost. Yeah. It's, I, when I heard that the movie was, was coming out, I had to reach out and uh, thank you for coming on and joining us. Again, I think my audience will appreciate the movie. They'll appreciate the book. I think they'll appreciate the story of, again, an American success story from a, a, a communist Chinese this is yeah. the American success story and helping millions of people along the way. Dr. Wayne, thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, blessings on the movie that it, it not simply that it does well, but that it impacts people kind of the same way Sound of Freedom did last year. I'd love yeah. to see sight impact people the same way this year. Yes, and I appreciate the opportunity, Paul, to be on your show. You and I met the 917 Society. That's our passion, right? To defend the Constitution. And th th this is what this country is about. The two bedrocks. One is Constitution, one is the Bible. And we should never forget what America is all about. That's right. The, the Constitution was made for a moral and religious people. Yes. Dr. Wayne, thank you. Again, blessings on, on, your, on the movie. And uh, hopefully we'll get a chance to meet again. And yes. whether it's one of our projects or just a chance to uh, be at the 917 Society and, and chat some more. Thank you, Paul. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you.